everyone and welcome to Journey with the Kellers. My name is Amanda Keller and today we are back in the Keller kitchen. So today we are going to be making something from Marvel Eats the Universe. Um, and today's recipe is Angel's Meatloaf Wellington. So I have had Wellington or beef Wellington before and I have had meatloaf before but I've never had the two combined. So this will be interesting. Okay, so a few prep things that you're gonna need ahead of time. You are gonna need one yellow onion minced and two garlic cloves minced as well. Minced just means cut up tiny, 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 as tiny as you can get it, okay? Which always for me isn't necessarily exactly super tiny, but that's okay. All right, you're gonna go ahead too and separate. Okay, so you need three eggs but you need to divide them out. So you need two eggs for one part of the recipe and one egg for another part of the recipe. So I've already cracked them open and put them in their bowl so they're ready. Um, but this one for the one isn't gonna be until later. So I'll actually end up sticking that in the refrigerator until we're ready for it, okay? All right, so what you're gonna do, first of all, is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. You're also going to need a nine by five loaf pan, okay? So we'll make sure you have that handy. All right, so once you got your oven heating up, you're gonna go ahead and take your two eggs and you're gonna put them in the bottom of a large bowl and you're just gonna kind of beat them up a little bit. Okay, to this, you are going to add one pound of ground chuck. Got that. And then also add one pound of ground pork. Make sure you don't leave your papers in there. Then you're also going to need a half a cup of plain breadcrumbs. Now I do know, which I'm sure it'll work for this too, if you don't have breadcrumbs, um, my mom always used saltine crackers. She'd just smash them up. So you could probably use that too, okay? I think a lot of households have saltine crackers around. Okay, so we have that. Then you're also going to need your minced onion and your two minced garlic cloves. Onion and the garlic cloves. All right, then uh, the last thing that you're gonna need to add into here is, oh, we need two things actually. So you need some uh, garlic, oh, we already have the garlic, and salt, I'm sorry. I'm reading that wrong. I was thinking it was saying garlic salt, but it's not, it's just garlic. Okay, so for the, gar for the salt, you are going to need just one teaspoon of salt. One, oh, almost in there. there. One teaspoon. There we go. Okay, now for the messy part, you guys. So you're gonna need to take all your jewelry or anything off um, that you have on your fingers. Because you're probably you're gonna use the best way to do this is to use your fingers to or use your hands to do this, okay? So you're just going to fold the mixture together until it's all nice and incorporated, okay? Eggs and everything, make sure you get it all nice and in there. Just keep folding until it gets nice and well mixed up. I kind of move the bowl around too to make sure I'm getting different parts of it. Making sure there's no clumps of meat stuck together. All right. Okay. It's looking pretty good. Nice and mixed up. I think we got all of our egg in. Yep. Okay, you guys. Quite messy. So here it is. Just looks basically like a bunch of meat with onions and stuff in it. Okay. So now you're going to take your loaf pan. And you're just gonna put this in here. It doesn't say to spray this or anything, which kind of worries me. Because I kind of feel like I should. So I think I'm going to, even though it doesn't tell me to. So let me wash my hands here real quick. Okay. 
And I know it's meat and people are like, uh, it probably won't stick, it's got its own grease. And that's probably true, but I have had meatloaf stick to a pan before. So we're just gonna kind of give it a little bit of a cautionary spray here. Don't know that it'll do it any good, but can't hurt to try, huh? Okay, so there we go. All right, so now you're gonna go ahead and put your meatloaf in here. Press it down. Trying to make sure it's all kind of even in there. I don't want it to look funky when it comes out. Okay. Looks good, you guys. Okay. There we go. All right, now what you're going to do is you are going to pop this in the oven and you are going to cook it for... Uh, oh, about an hour. So you're going to cook it until it basically it's done for about an hour. Once it's done, you're going to let it cool um, a little bit, basically down to room temperature. And then you're going to stick it in the refrigerator until it gets nice and cold. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to heat it for an hour at 350. Um, pull it out of the oven, let it come down to room temperature, then stick it in the, uh, refrigerator and chill it and then when we come back we will work with the puff pastry and all of that so make sure you've got your puff pastry thawed and then we'll have to cut it in half and do some things to it to get this done okay all right so i'll be back in just a few okay, minutes you guys so our meatloaf is almost chilled all the way in the refrigerator so i thought i'd go ahead and show you guys what our next steps are going to be so the first thing that you're going to do is preheat your oven to 425 degrees so let me do that Um, once you've got that preheating, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your one egg that you had left. You're going to add just one tablespoon of water to it. Wait, to let me get my tablespoon out here. There we go. One tablespoon of water. And you're basically just going to make an egg wash. So you're just going to kind of mix that up together. Okay. And then have a brush handy to, uh, to uh, brush it on later, okay? So for right now, we're gonna set that off to the side. Okay, so what it said to do um, after that was you needed to take a one puff pastry and thaw it out, and then cut that pu puff pastry in half, and then roll both of those halves into a seven by 11 sheet. So the box of puff pastries that I get comes with two puff, pa puff pastries in them, but they're already only nine by nine. So I just went ahead and rolled them both out to 11 inches so that I would use both because I didn't want to waste one. I don't really have anything to use it for right now. So I didn't want it to be wasted. So I'm just going to use both of them. So they're 11 by nine instead of nine, instead of 11 by seven, but it's pretty close. Okay. So if you, if you are, my puff pastries came with quite a bit of flour still on the outside of them. So they were just fine to just set on the counter and roll out. But if yours look like they're gonna be a little too sticky, you can go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of flour on the counter before you roll them out and some on your rolling pin. Then roll them out to an 11 by seven if you're just gonna use the one and cut it in half, okay? Then you're gonna need a baking sheet with parchment paper or with a silicone mat on it, whichever one you want. Oh, look, I said that and now it's like sticking. There we go. There we go, okay. So you're gonna put the one uh, part of the, uh, I just totally blanked on what it is, the puff pastry on there. Okay, we're gonna get our meatloaf out here. Now, when I took my meatloaf out of the pan, I went ahead and put it on a plate so that it would cool off quicker without being in the pan. So we are just gonna pick this up and you're gonna set it on top of that puff pastry there. Okay, wash my hands off real quick. And then you're gonna take the second puff pastry and you're gonna put it over top of that, okay? So you're gonna take your second puff pastry. I'm gonna try to line it up a little bit with the one on the bottom as much as I can. Let's get this out of the way. 
okay? And then what you're gonna do is you are going to like basically pinch these together, okay? So, and I think I might trim that bottom one up just a little bit. Just so that it's not quite so over that. I don't want that much over. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of this one off. Like I said, if you've done the 11 by seven, you're probably fine. Mine just were a little bit bigger than that. There we go. Okay, so now you're gonna try to like crimp these together. Okay. And what does it say to do? Ah, what are you doing up here? Get down. Get, get. Yes, yeah, it does say trim the edges if necessary and then crimp the edges to fully enclose, okay? So I think just to make sure that they're fully, fully enclosed, I think I'm gonna roll it a little bit too. But I don't know, crimping for me would be like using a fork. So we might go around and do that too. Just because, you know, we wanna make sure it doesn't come apart. Okay, but get these crimped together here. I am going to use a fork, you guys, and kind of crimp it like you would kind of like a pie crust. So we're going to grab a fork, and I don't know what you're doing up here on the counter, little Missy. You're going to be in trouble. I'm going to crimp it a little bit with a fork to kind of make sure it kind of stays together. Plus, it'll probably look pretty, too, you know. Nothing wrong with making something look a little fancy. Why not? Okay. Oops. Watch that. I don't put a, I think I put a little bit of, get. They are really after, I don't know why, but she is being terrible today. Okay. All right. So here we go. So there is that. Okay. So it's all nice and crimped together. I might have stabbed a little bit of holes in it with the fork, but I think that'll be okay. I don't think it'll be a big deal. I always try covering them back up here real quick. Okay, so now once you have that done, um, you're gonna go ahead and wash this whole thing down with your egg wash, okay? Make sure you get all of it covered really good. What is going on here? Here we go. Okay. All of it nice and covered in egg wash. You got a whole egg. I would use it probably just about all of it if you can. Okay. Good, good, good. Looking better and better, you guys. Looking better and better. Sure we got everything over here? Okay, perfect. So now you got a nice yellow, basically. It looks like a big thing of dough is what it looks like. Okay, so now you're gonna take a sharp knife and what you're gonna do is cut several slits in the top to allow the steam to escape. Okay, so we're gonna cut a slit here and a slit here, oops, and a slit here. Yeah, might as well do one here and one here as well. There we go. Okay, so you got nice little slits at the top. You guys can see that. Okay, so now you're going to pop this back in the oven at 425 degrees. You're gonna bake it until it's puffed and golden brown and it should take about 30 minutes, okay? Um, when it gets done, you're gonna garnish it with some chives, okay? So if you wanna snip up 
some chives to garnish the top of it with, you can go ahead and do that while it's cooking. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in the oven at 425 for 30 minutes, and I will be back as soon as it's done. So I'll be back in just a minute. Hey you guys, so this is all done here. It's looking pretty good. Look at how nice and golden brown that is. Mmm, looks delicious. Nice and hot. Ooh, grab the hot pot while it's there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and try to cut this and see what it looks like here on the inside. Excuse my dog. All right, let's see here. Well, we can get it to cut through. Not moving around too much. There we go. Okay. Let you guys take a look here, see what it looks like on the inside. Look at that, you guys. Doesn't that look delicious? Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so let me grab a fork and I will try to take a little bite of this. Let make sure we get some meatloaf and some of the crust. We'll just grab some out here. Looks really good, you guys. Looks delicious. Mm, nice and piping hot, too. Mmm. That's really good. Mmm. Okay. The meat is nice and tender. It's not so tender that it's like falling apart. It's actually like a meatloaf. The bread tastes really good with it. It gives it almost kind of like a meatloaf sandwich taste. It's pretty good, you guys. Okay, you guys, that's wonderful. I'll have to try that again sometime. All right, you guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you like or don't if you don't. Everyone have a good day. Enjoy your cooking. Keep your kitchen messy, and we'll see you later. Bye.